program that be used to help others know more about plants and vegetables. We plant all this food not just for us but for other people. If you take care of the garden, the garden takes care of you. Well, now that I learned how to garden, well, I can buy some seeds into the store, maybe plant them in the in my my neighbor has a garden, so I can help her out with her garden. When we pull together and make gardens in our schools, we can actually influence some of the students um, who go there and how they treat the environment or how they eat. If you want to make a garden of your own, I think you should come to City Sprout. So City Sprouts is a it's a program. It's a partnership between a nonprofit and the public schools, and uh, City Sprouts brings in the resources to build schoolyard gardens at the school and a part-time staff person. When I think about City Sprouts and the impact it has on the school, I really go towards curriculum because in this school in particular, we see it, the art classes go out there from kindergarten through eighth grade. We have science that does and uh, studies bugs and dirt and herbs and turns over uh, you know, decaying logs and they investigate that way. We plant things in terms of um, medieval herb gardens. We've planted uh, the Three Sisters Corns project. We look at Reed Little House on the Prairie and they go out and they, they've planted wheat and they've measured how high the wheat grows. We talk in the air, how sweet it is to be alive. It's like locally grown apples. How sweet it is to be alive. Well, if we have like science and we have like quizzes or anything, we could just like, if we have a plant quiz, then we, we could know the answers because we've been here for one month and learning about all this. Well, I learned that tomato isn't a vegetable, it's a fruit. We grew our own, we grew tomatoes and we had to uh, like, um, keep it in a journal on um, how the progress was. One important thing I learned in City Sprouts was the laws of the garden, which is light, air, water, and soil, and you need that to grow any kind of plant. It's sort of like having your own farm in your backyard, but since most of us in Cambridge, you know, it's a city, a lot of us live in apartments and condos, and we don't really have our own house. School gardens are a great way to have the same experience as anyone else really important for our community. As you can see, uh, there's lots of bricks and mortar um, and very little green, very little, you know, living, breathing other than the people. So it's really nice. You know, there's a lot of blacktop and concrete um, for us to have flowers and vegetables and plants. Um, that's a nice change. Nice change for nice the area. Change, nice change. As we've seen through studies that Russ Lopez has, Lopez has done at Boston University, areas where there are, there's green space and excellent schoolyards, Children do much better on their tests, they have better concentration skills, they're able to engage more in physical education, there are lower levels of obesity. Well, it's good to be out, um, in the garden because you learn about, like, instead of being home and watching it on TV, you can actually experience it. Everything you want to teach can be taught uh, using the garden. Uh, and it's, uh, I think, about finding ways to support our teachers uh, to give them planning time, uh, to give them uh, the curriculum uh, and professional support uh, that enables them to, uh, to do this, to take off uh, and use the garden as an extension of their classroom. All of us brought um, beans home and my mom cooked them. It was tasty. I just kind of picked the food when no one's looking. Like I made a huge bug damage spot in the cat um, the Brussels sprouts, and I said it was bug damage. <laughs> but it was my my mouth. I mean, I usually just order pizza, but with City Sprouts, you can make pizza with the fresh vegetables that you have. You could just buy pickles at the store, but we actually made pickles using our own ingredients, so. My dad made some, uh, like, a dish with it, even though the potatoes were a little small, because we had to take them out because there was, like, a fermented plant next to it. But they tasted great and... Uh, I mean, I put some seasoning in, in the potatoes and uh, we had it for lunch that very same day. And uh, he was excited that the product that he picked up from the soil itself, I mean, he was able to uh, eat it as well. If we had gardens in every school, everything would, would be different from my perspective. Um, I think school food, the kids would start demanding better school food. Um, and so with the parents, 
that kids would probably be helping the parents to eat more vegetables. And the kids would also become more responsible for their own bodies because they have a little bit of control. It's a, it's a self-empowering kind of tool by teaching kids how to grow vegetables. You're able to then teach them how to like it, how to, how to love it, how to, be, how to be invested in it. If there are City Sprouts Gardens in every school, you'd probably have a bunch of health nuts. Have a great time at City Sprouts. Well, she rides in the treetop all day long. She's hopping and a-bopping low low. She's singing the song of Lori Jean. All the little birdies on Jayford Street I love to hear the robin go and tweet, tweet, and tweet. Robin, tweet, tweet, tweet. Oh, rock and robin. Tweet.